Hi, my name is Ramin and I'm going to present our paper in which we characterize the amplification power of OpenDNS resolvers. This is a joint work of me, Roland van Rijswijk-Dijk, Matthijs Juncker, and Anna Sperito at the University of Twente. DNS-based DDoS attacks are not any novel, and there are already a wide range of studies in the literature on this matter. Let's have a recap on how these attacks work. In most cases, an attacker takes control over a botnet, which needs to be in networks that do not validate source IP address. These bots then send spoofed traffic towards OpenDNS resolvers. These resolvers see the traffic as originated at the victim, so they send responses towards the victim. DNS responses typically have a larger size than the query, so they are amplified. The aggregation of unsolicited responses consumes the computational and network resources of the victim and disrupts its functionality. Looking at the literature, we see many efforts that have reduced the number of open resolvers on the internet to a large extent over the past years. However, there are still a couple of millions of them exposed for potential misuse. This becomes more important if we notice that, as reported in a recent research, roughly 90% of DNS-based DDoS attacks captured at a large IXP misuse only up to 100 resolvers. Thus, to reduce the attack potential, we need a more targeted approach. We define and answer three research questions in our paper. First, we elaborate on factors that contribute to the amplification power of OpenDNS resolvers. These fall under four domains. Support for various DNS protocol features, handling any query type, caching behavior of open resolvers, and finally, TCP support. Due to time limits, I'm not going to discuss these deeper here, but you can read more on it in our paper. In our second research question, we aim to explore the extent to which these factors are supported by OpenDNS resolvers in the IPv4 address space. To do this, we run weekly OpenDNS resolver scans, consisting of two phases. First, an open resolver identification phase, and then systematic testing of the amplification power. Our third research question aims to examine the extent to which we can benefit from a prioritized open resolver eradication, meaning removing most potent open resolvers first. Our measurement setup is pretty similar to the state-of-the-art scanning projects, consisting of a scanner host and an authoritative server over which we have control. First, our scanner issues A queries towards each routable IPv4 address. These queries are unique for each destination to avoid caching and make it possible to trace back responses to queries. We call this step as Open Resolver Identification Phase. Next, we send follow-up queries to resolvers which correctly responded to our queries in the first phase. We call this amplification power testing. I will elaborate on these follow-up queries in the next slide. The pointer record of our scanner machine, as well as the query name used in our scans, point to a web page in which we explain our goal and opt-out mechanism in case network operators wish to be excluded from our measurements. During our one-year measurement period, we received opt-out requests from a handful of networks, and we excluded them from our measurements. Our follow-up queries consist of 15 queries using a combination of different query types and DNS features. These queries use our specifically crafted subdomains to assess the amplification power of each resolver. For example, queries number 8 and 9 are meant to measure eDNS-enabled TXT query support, once with DNSSEC OK bit enabled and once disabled. For these queries, we set the eDNS buffer size to a large enough number so that our scanner doesn't introduce a limitation in the resolution process. For each of our queries, we also report the achievable amplification factor. These numbers would change using a different measurement setup, however, they provide a useful indication to rank open resolvers based on their amplification power. Let's have a look at a couple of our findings. In our measurements spanning a year, 
we discover roughly 2.6 million open resolvers. This includes both recursive resolvers as well as forwarders, and is shown in the first bar on this figure. As you can see, there is a big difference in the number of resolvers that support our various queries. Interestingly, we observe that around 19% of open resolvers fail to resolve classic TXT queries. This is surprising as classic TXT queries were part of the DNS specification from the very beginning of its design. Going towards queries with more bulky responses, we observe that only a limited group of resolvers can handle these. For example, around 3% of resolvers properly respond to TXT queries with large responses. Nevertheless, this small percentage when considered in absolute numbers still provides attackers with enough amplification capacity. We also observe that a limited group of open resolvers fall back to TCP when they receive truncated answers from our authoritative name server. This is much lower than numbers reported in the literature for resolvers contacting a CCTLD name server, and the main reason for this might be that resolvers contacting a CCTLD name server are not necessarily open resolvers. We also check whether there are queries which are mutually supported by a large number of resolvers, but no clear pattern was observed in that sense, except that majority of resolvers supporting one or more complex queries also support classic TXT and any queries, which is not a surprise on its own. Next, we assign each open resolver the highest amplification factor supported in the list of our queries. This helps us to rank open resolvers based on their amplification power. We observe that a small group of open resolvers provide a high amplification factor, while the vast majority have a limited amplification power. For example, while 6.5% of resolvers offer more than 125 times of amplification, 45% of all resolvers only offer 2.4 times or less of amplification in our measurement setup. Using the derived amplification power, we calculate an aggregate attack power of all resolvers in the IPv4 address space, which is a weighted summation of all amplification factors. This reveals that roughly 80% of potential DNS-based DDoS amplification power can be removed by patching 20% of most potent open resolvers. Similar to many other phenomena, a long tail of open resolvers with a low amplification factor is visible. To conclude, we show that open resolvers are diverse in terms of amplification power. Majority of open resolvers fail to deliver bulky responses. However, there is still a large enough group supporting such queries. And finally, we can reduce the potential DNS amplification power by 80% if 20% of most powerful open resolvers are patched. We consider communicating our findings with operators and measuring the potential impact afterwards. Also, to evaluate path dependencies, we consider measurements from multiple vantage points. With that, I would like to thank you for listening to my talk, and you can find my contact info here if you want to have offline discussions about our paper.